welcome to another episode of The Spidey Show. We are so excited today because this is brought to you by Progressive. That's right. We are so excited for Progressive. What's one thing you'd purchase with a little extra savings? A weighted blanket, smart speaker, the new self-care trend you keep hearing about? Well, Progressive wants to make sure you're getting what you want by helping you save money on car insurance, which is a must have. Drivers who save by switching to Progressive save over $700 on average. Wow. And customers can qualify for an average of six discounts when they sign up. Discounts like having multiple vehicles on yes. your policy. Progressive offers outstanding coverage and award winning claim service day or night. They have customer support 24-7, 365 days a year when you need them the most. They're at their best. A little off your rate each month goes a long way. Get a quote today at Progressive.com and see why four out of five new auto customers recommend Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. National annual average insurance savings by new customers surveyed in 2020. Potential savings will vary. Discounts vary and are not available in all states and situations. Woohoo! Who doesn't want to save money? Hello. Progressive. You need car Let's go. Let's do it. Also brought to you by our incredible studio, Live by Live. Hello. <laughs> With an incredible team. So many team members make this happen. We call the team Steve, but it's really like. It's like 20 people put this together, and, but we, we refer to it as Steve. We uh, opened up the window so you could see it's that we're beautiful. actually in Beverly Hills. We're not in a closet at Spidey Manor. Um, and oh, look at this. Gorgeous. This is budget. Yeah. This is, this is a studio in Beverly Hills. We are in 90210. Uh, we actually saw multiple tours driving on this street. People are paying to see this street. So. Yeah, Spencer is Mr. LA. He doesn't want to go anywhere. He's like, why would we ever go anywhere? This is where everyone wants to be. So people are, we actually were stuck by people paying to look at the streets. We were in traffic. I was like, this is such a good. And we paid less because we had progressive. Oh, so that's, that's right. A good thing. Uh, 365 days a year, customer that's support. Right. Multiple uh, cars. Oh my God. Uh, you know, when Gunner turns 16, we're going to have to add him onto that that's coverage. Right. So thanks, progressive. God, willing another child um okay we are so over the hills we don't want to talk whoa, about it whoa we are not whoa that that just no. came out wrong we are not over the hills the hills is over we are just we're popping that expression over the hill is I like said hills yeah no but it just sounded wrong okay the hills so is over the TV we, we show, are popping the tv show we did not watch last night because we did watch siesta key on mtv we did which is great <laughs> and mtv is an awesome network this show Definitely went so south because of so this producer hard. Meg and the cast. Oh, of course, you know, everyone just wanted to take this ringleader. easy route, right? So, anyways, we didn't watch it. We will quickly recap it, but I have spent enough energy on these people in real life having to be around them. It was just, it was really hard, it was really challenging. And then I don't want to have to relive it because it's been extremely stressful just having to deal with people constantly attacking Leeches. you on camera, off camera, and being like, please leave me alone. Like, I don't have a problem That's with you guys. Right. I understand if there is a problem, it's worth working out, which is what I did the episode before or at Kristen Kelly's party. But to continue to be attacked, 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 and have the whole cast want to ambush you and jump on it and then have all the producers secretly lining everything up. The, you know, we didn't have any of the executive producers come talk to us in person in From um, the moment we landed in Tahoe. in Tahoe. So normally you're on a cast trip, they meet you there. Hey, how are you? What's going on? And everyone else saw the producers except us. So right away I knew this was going to be a really What happened fishy with that trip. one guy? He completely ignored me at breakfast. He was like, he, he was sitting yeah. with Frankie, that one guy producer. Yeah, before any of this yeah, happened. Yeah, what was his name? Brett. Brett, yeah. God, dis, highly dislike you. So <laughs> next time I see you, if you want smoke, I'm available. Obviously, you know, just verbal smoke. No, so rude. I don't this know. Like a, I would never have I don't know in what world you think that you can treat people the way. Like just because we're on camera or on yeah, a TV show. Because like, we're talent. It's like. Uh, no, but on the, also the talent and the, um, I was going to say staff. What are they called? <laughs> yeah, Coworkers. Um, it is. 
and I don't know in what world you think you can come and scream in people's face and say horrible things and that they're going to be around. So at this point, and that's what I was saying, like, it's not worth the money or the show. Like, it's just. Uh, in their defense, that I'm cool with that when you're 20, 21, 22, first couple of seasons. But when you're 37, 38 years old, two kids, you know, now we're out of that realm of how you communicate with people. If we're 20, you know, on the island in Siesta Key, you can start yelling in people's face. 100%. You can slap people in the face, like, allegedly, they didn't show it. The, not condoning um, that, not saying no, that's No, but I'm right saying that's what all. happens on the shows with 21-year-olds, right. When you year olds. get into a yelling match like that, it ends usually in an altercation. That's what happened in Siesta Key. It ended in an altercation. We don't know. They cut away. Maybe, they cut away. Okay. maybe Juliet didn't connect with the strike. You maybe. Know, it, but also know. in real life, you can't scream at people like that without it usually becoming an altercation. And that's why I was leaving and I felt trapped in this room. Anyways, the whole thing was such an ambush and I would never note, allow myself to be note. treated this way. Before I forget, mm -hmm. Juliet needs to get into one of these celebrity... TikTok, YouTube, one of these box celebrity box she events. So Juliet will she would rock win. anyone. She, she is win. so brave. Kelsey is seven feet tall. Like I, I don't like Kelsey would knock me out. And like you don't know if Kelsey's not going to hit you back. Like you know Kelsey's so nice, know. but you don't know. So that was so. <laughs> that just shows you Juliet is. That's don't, not her first fight on oh, camera. I'm just like oh, I, I know, it. but that was so definitely her camera. biggest opponent. Yeah. I have this um, thing in my finger. But it's don't get me wrong. I'm all for drama on reality shady. shows, okay, right? Like, 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 look, I'm all for drama on reality shows. I get it. I think it's an important part of it. I think there's a way to do it. But the way that it happened and keeps happening, it is actually an ambush. It's just, it's Let's, just. Before we get out, you know, one thing I love about our podcast is we're so engaged with our listeners okay. and our audience. So I pulled together some, some amazing screenshots that were popping up on my Twitter and my DM. So let's just let's just open some up here. Holly, Holly Lamb, I don't not know my if, sister. I don't know Holly Lamb, not 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 our sister, a different account. I mean, Jason's wife is yelling at you, asking why you don't want to talk to her. Seriously, she's a wacko. That's it. I officially give up on the hills. I got about 30 minutes in and I finally cannot do it anymore. I love you and Heidi, but I cannot watch these pretentious jerks keep lying and yelling for no reason. Jason's wife keeps saying that you are not the center of the world. Then she won't shut up talking about you. Oh my, oh my. I hope that producer Meg never works again. That was a good one. Um, let's see who else we got. You know, I got so many good thought, uh, Julie Howard. <laughs> Look at these thoughts. I mean, I didn't have this many thoughts. So I thought we'd, we'd go through Julie's <gasps> thoughts from tonight's episode from most of America. Obviously, Julie's speaking on behalf of most of America. I was hoping the murderer who would be a serial killer and take out everyone except Spidey and when, and we can save Brody if he stays fun. Brody <laughs> saying the whole thing could have been prevented. You mean like if you didn't open your Yenta mouth and tell Jason? Why are Caitlin and Caroline on the show? You know how with every issue there are two sides. Well, no one feels sorry for Caitlin. Was she pregnant while bitching about Brody all season? Audrina doesn't like toxic energy. Every relationship she's been in is toxic. Plus, you play both sides and then play victim when you are exposed. Smitey must be tired from carrying the entire cast on your back. That's all. I mean, that should be merch. That should just be the back of a shirt. If we were a band, that would be uh, our hoodie. Um, a couple more. I know we don't have all day, but these are so, um, this is interesting and it's true. This is more of an emotional take. Wow. Tonight's episode. Oh, this is from Liz Halshauer. Wow. I hope everyone's happy that, I mean, if you DM me, you should know it's, it's going live somewhere. Wow. Tonight's episode. The number one thing that stands out to me is Brandon stating hurt people, hurt people. I just don't understand how people don't see that Jason's wife is the hurt person who is hurting people. She clearly has an issue with Heidi and is hurting her and you are standing up for Heidi. You guys handled yourself so well. I hope everyone else can see through the fake stuff. And that is true. I do. I think uh, Ashley was so triggered because the last time she was pregnant, yeah. Jason was lying. This was on the show, people, about being sober. And then she started freaking out that like... This can't be happening. Is he lying again? I, no one even said he was. I just said he's a liar, which didn't, I guess, come out 
across clearly on the show. But again, he's a liar. That's my experience with him from day one when he leaked the LC sex tape rumor to TMZ. And you can Google TMZ that it was being shopped around by his manager at the time. And then uh, Perez asked me if I had heard th about this. Or third party, whatever uh, it is, yeah, that he had it from. Yeah, his buddy or whatever. That was him because I knew about that, that he was doing that. And maybe he forgets because, again, he says he's an addict. Maybe it was during a, an episode or something. And then he blames uh, – then him and his – him and LC, they get together. He has an intervention. The parents, parents. parents all talk. Mm -hmm. And then they put it all on me, you know, and I'm the fall guy. So I – my experience with this and guy – and by the way, every time he talks about – what's the term they amends. use? Amends. Amends. Making amends. I look at him and I think you are a pathological liar because if you truly want to make amends, you would tell – millions of people that I didn't make up a sex tape about LC. That was all you and you're doing when you were under the influence. So this whole I'm making amends thing, I'm like, no, you're not. Because uh, I tried to film with you last season and, and have you make amends with me and you wouldn't do it. You were like, oh, no, a lot of things we said, blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, tell the truth. OK, you're still a liar. He Thank did you. say on camera, they just never aired it. He did say you guys had nothing to do with that. There, it wasn't a rumor. He just he danced around saying it was true without just saying, "Hey guys, I messed up. I had the sex tape that I was shopping around and blamed on you guys." So he didn't straight say it, but he did dance around it. And like, then MTV didn't even want like that. That's what they said. around it, waltz, right? Like, but still, truth. Huh. Yeah, they have it he, on camera. So. so probably he does get triggered every time he sees Spencer and myself because there's a really big elephant in the room. You tried to destroy us with a mistake that you and your ex-girlfriend made. And that is not on us. And that's why Ashley was so mad last season too. She's like, stop talking about the sex tape. It's like, well, that's the only reason you're on the show, girl, is because Lauren w was the star of the show and her ex-boyfriend was Jason. So that's why he's on it. And then he had a problem with us and a showdown because he tried to blame. So she gets so mad about that. But it's like, I'm sorry, that's part of your past. That's part of all of our past. And he should have been honest with it. So anyways, it is frustrating with that whole scenario and he's just so fake with the fake amends because it's like you're just starting a problem with us you've done nothing but talk about smack about spencer and myself this whole season yeah they haven't aired a lot of it but it's still out there and you're still saying these horrible things about us and like that girl said ashley cannot stop talking about me i'm not saying the world revolves around me you are you literally cannot stop talking about me it's crazy i'm i'm watching it i'm like are you obsessed with me? Like, what is going on? Like, I get a storyline, I get you guys, or just say, hey, yeah, we just want to be us. main characters. Yeah. We're trying to be, you know, I get that too. I'm not, I don't hate that game. I get it. But there's also a line. Like, I watch all these housewives and they fight, but then they make up and they move on and it's a different thing and they rotate. It is not two people attacking aggressively at two other people the whole time and then getting the whole group involved because it's easier for everyone than having to have their own storylines and problems with each other so it's just it's just frustrating that it was allowed and encouraged by the producers more back to our incredible listeners <laughs> we have so much so many great ones and we don't have all day michelle miles uh i cut off the first part of the essay but this will dive in right here Focus on the positive. You and Heidi have so much support. Honestly, f the entire cast. We can bleep that out. Every single one of them, not one person actually had your back. They played the pussy neutral role. We can bleep that too. That's not a friend. I would like to hear Brody and Brandon speak up, not hiding behind a text you, but live. Or they're out too. I'm unfollowing. Really felt for you and Heidi Knight. MTV is negative and perpetuating hate. I don't respect that. And do not let anyone say you were out of bounds by saying to Jason, you don't want him to relapse again. That's a well wish. Was it not super out of bounds and immature for Jason to lead by saying you're a fucking weirdo like you've always been or whatever he spewed? I can't believe these people even have airtime. I'm sorry for the ambush. Anyone with the brain saw how unfair it was. And nice fur coat, Ashley. I hope PETA gets all up on her ass. So back to that. Again, and I don't know what they, I didn't watch the episode, how they showed me my testimonial. My point 
is everything on this show Jason ever talks about is relapsing, trigger. So I just was trying to convey, I don't get like, I'm sure it came off sarcastic. No, I don't want him to relapse. I don't care what he does, but I don't want anything bad. Like he has a family, I'm not over here. Like if anything, if I care that much, I'll be like, die, homie. Like if I was on that level, I'm just sarcastically saying, I don't get this. For somebody who is the AA, uh, Calm man, spokesperson, business person, da 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 da. This doesn't seem like the type of environment for somebody who's not trying to relapse. So again, I was drunk. You ambushed me at eleven thirty. You're getting. You already called me a, we- a fucking weirdo with no friends. Da 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 da. So you're not getting my nice version of that. But I will say it again. I I don't want him to relapse. Why are you here in this type of setting fighting with a drunk person if sobriety is so important to you? You almost killed yourself. You lost it. means all these things you say in your testimony all serious. Why doesn't it matter here? So again, if you're not going to get into my head and see that's what I'm saying. If I wanted to say something shady, I would have literally been like, relapse, you little effing, you know, like, that's what I would have said. I'm not scared to use my words. I really was sarcastically saying, like, bro, I don't want you to relapse. Like, that's all you talk about. Hello. Like, you know, so it's a lose-lose, you know, but I'll say it again, like, because there's a couple of AA people message me, like, how could you say that? I literally, if they had Hills cameras again, I'd say the same thing, because what I'm trying to convey is for somebody whose storyline that all you talk about is this, which is your life. I understand. I get it. Why, why, why are we fighting with a drunk person at 1130 at night? Does this seem like, a, a, do they teach that at AA or is that one of the steps? And I, I haven't been to class, but I think that seems out of bounds. And when we asked Holly, Heidi's sister, who runs treatment facilities, who's been 10 plus years sober, she said this is the most, like we should have her on the podcast actually and have her speak for herself. I don't want to misquote her, but she's saying for somebody in recovery, that whole scenario and ambush is the biggest BS, like anti sobriety commercial ever. It's the complete opposite. You should be handling this so differently, so calm. Never let your wife be screaming. Like Holly, who's very wise recovery person was like, this is literally the 180 opposite of what a recovery type, somebody who also is a leader in that community that has speeches or whatever, like, no, that's not what you do. She also said that this is really bad for his sobriety and probably triggering things for him. And she was like, this is why it's not good you know, for a lot of people to go on TV as a captain of like recovery, because it's giving it a bad name. You know, it's like you're attacking Spencer, first of all, for his drinking, you're not taking accountability and worrying about yourself this whole time. You're worrying about me and my drinking and Spencer and his drinking. And are we loud? Are we this? Like, I just don't think it was the right environment for Jason or Ashley this whole season. I think Ashley has a lot going on. I think she's really emotional, hormonal, pregnant, uncomfortable. Like, this is just not... Why are you putting yourself in this situation? And you probably are triggering your husband too because you are fired up. You guys are both so angry. You just, let me. Okay, Before I ahead. forget, okay. no, no. Does it show on the show where I say like, I'm confused. You guys just got a divorce and we're not, they didn't hear any of that. Oh, so any of the real stuff they didn't put on. I also said in the scene, like, I'm still confused. The last time I saw you guys were filming, you were getting a divorce and living in a hotel, but now you guys are this dynamic duo trying to take down Spidey, the drunks. Like, I, I love that in air that. Okay. Sorry, yeah, it, I, that was. Uh, it was like, is very confusing. I think these two are just on one, and I don't think this was the appropriate place or time. And I get you're trying to, you're thirsty for the camera time. And like I said before, they've had conversations like, who should we get? But it's like, Ashley's very pregnant at this point and pregnant and had publicly said that she's experienced hardships with pregnancy before. So it's just not the right, this whole thing. And that's why I didn't want to get into it with her. And I kept saying like, calm down, you're pregnant. Like this is just not- Did they air that? Did they air, how do you say, calm down, you're pregnant? They convey that people- We need a camera pointing at Steve. (laughs) Yeah. Next time. They, They convey that people at the table are trying to calm Ashley down because she's pregnant and upset. Correct. So I was the only one trying to calm Ashley down because she was pregnant. I probably said that to her 20 times. Every other word, I kept looking at her. I was not being sarcastic or mean. I'm looking at her sad because I know how hard it is for her to have got pregnant. I'm trying to get pregnant. I'm like, stop, like you are pregnant. What are you even doing? None of this is worth it. We kept saying that, Spencer said that to her. He's like, none of this petty drama is worth 
either of this to you guys. Like, you are pregnant. You should calm down. And we kept trying to calm her down. Finally, at the very end, the table jumps in. Ashley, calm down. It's like, yeah, are you guys kidding me? She has high blood pressure. She's stressed out. She's pregnant. This is all off. You just, go ahead. No, I, go. You're, you're reminding go. the flashbacks. Go. Did, uh, that crystal is so beautiful. You should keep that. Um, did they air Jen trying to defend us? And Frankie like, shut up, Jen. Oh, wow. The one person that tried to defend us, MTV, won't even air that. That's wild. Yeah, so Jen, Jen did. Gato. Jen tried to step in and be like, stop this, you guys. And then yeah. Frankie was like, stay out of it, Jen. It's like, yeah. no, Frankie, your wife can speak. She's a grown woman with an opinion. Yeah, but, and okay. she disagreed with the whole group. She's like, this is out of hand, the way you guys are treating Heidi and Spencer. And that was true. It was ridiculous the way everyone had to get in on it it's like if all of you had such a problem with us none of you had the balls to come up on your own and have a conversation with us if caitlin doesn't like us so much come up and confront us you don't have a problem going to confront that you ask us our advice you pretend to be so nice and fake to our faces so it's like if everyone in the group had such a problem then one-on-one -on -one, we're not that intimidating we're receptive we're able to have conversations so they all should have been able to come up to us on their own and have that did it air me telling Justin Bobby, like, don't pretend we're friends, any of that stuff? You to Justin? Yeah. No. Oh, my gosh. They, they, that's fascinating. Karen Ann, people that have to tear others down in order to build themselves up are weak. And let's get this straight. You are being sabotaged, and they're making it look like you are self-destructing. It's shrewd as hell. I can't be the only person that sees this. Anyone that watches all the previous episodes has to see it. And that's my problem with this take down the reason like Steve because I didn't watch the episode Steve I asked Steve what it looked like and he said it looked like you were not down with the game and you weren't participating I told I think in the last podcast or one of these that Brody called me into his hotel room right before we went there and he's like hey just so you know like this is all a setup and I thought you'd be cool with it because you know you want a good show da 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 obviously I wasn't you know but it's like it is what it is you know no time machine here and oh yeah that's what I'm cool with I flew to Tahoe to get yelled at and get in a fight with two randoms that I don't even care about from Orange County yeah that's a good show too um so I already knew this was happening and I was watching this producer Meg and her little minions keep on telling Ashley and Jason like no no not yet and I'm like, like it's so flagrant like us, they're coming like, to the table <sighs> mid scene like stay here wait till you do it and we're like we're not doing this they're not airing this part but we're literally like we don't want to have a showdown with these two like we have to get back to Gunner who's being watched by the makeup artist because Abby his nanny was in a car accident the day before we and left. And she goes to bed at 8 o'clock and had a limit. She's like, my limit I will possibly do for you guys is 10.30 every night. It was already 11.30. So, I'm like, this is so not happening. My look of like not being in the game, I knew it wasn't a game. It was just a facade to set us up. And everyone was in on it. And they all... Uh, filmed all day long. That's why they didn't film us during the day. Like we flew to Tahoe. They didn't even film us skiing. They're filming everybody. We did all this. It was just to have a setup because we missed the setup that Meg had set up at the sobriety baby announcement because we, Meg said, oh yeah, this is when you're getting ambushed. We're like, we're not going to that. We're not stupid. We don't care about, we're not fighting with these people. We don't care. We don't care. Like, That's what's so like, frustrating. I'm down to fight with people I care about, but I'm not or gonna, things to care yeah, about. And like, we already talked to them. I yeah, already like, talked something to Something that Ashley. makes sense. Like, I don't care. We already what, did this storyline. Like, like oh, great. You think we're annoying. I think, you, same. Yeah, like, great. Totally. We don't have here. to be friends. That's what I said to Ashley that they didn't air. I'm like, we're not yeah, friends. Why don't they air that? We don't need to try to be friends. Like, we can just be in a group and not be friends. And she was so mad by that. But I'm like, look, we're not friends. And it's, it's okay. People don't have to be friends. So that's what was so frustrating, too. It's like, you already took our whole season. You've sucked so much energy out of us. You keep attacking us. At what point are, is our our ability to be able to do what we want on the show taken away? Look at this tweet from Spy Mom 10 I love that handle on Twitter. Every single person at the party was on a mission to bash Heidi and Spencer because they could see how much popularity they have gained. Jealousy is a beast. And to me, the other cast members knew how boring they would seem next to Spencer and Heidi. This happened in real life. The moment the cast turned on us, it was an interview that never aired. It was with Good Morning America at the London Hotel. It was a live feed. I don't know what happened, why they didn't use it, because they, cha oh, they changed the air date for that season one 
and it was going to be a cut to live. So it wasn't even live, but it was going to go in the live section. I don't even know how this works, but we're filming it. All Good Morning America hosts want to talk about with Spencer and Heidi, us being famous, hummingbirds, Taylor Swift. The entire cast is all sitting in these chairs, not being asked one thing, and they are just steam is coming off them because they're all dressed up in their best outfits. They all did hair and makeup, and that was the turning point. I watched it happen. Like Everyone realized, oh, like it was MTV did reach out to Spencer and Heidi to do a show, and then you guys all got brought in, and we just call it The Hills New Beginnings. That's really what happened because that's when we were popping the most ever, hanging out with Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift was holding Miracle Baby. I was getting 8 million views a Snapchat. I was winning Snapchatter of the Year. All of you, all due respect, I'm not being ego, whatever. This is a fax. I have screenshots in my favorites if you want to pull them up. Uh, you were irrelevant to the new time. Maybe back in 2009, you guys were all popping. Now we're talking about Snapchat, social media. This is our time, and you guys couldn't handle that, and that was the major shift. And then season one airs, and it was so positive. You're all at our vow renewal. Here's Shrek, Delta Force Commando, had a great point. He keeps on calling me, and he's like, how does MTV and the producers think that the couple that has been together for 14 years, the only real thing on this show, the only real relationship, the one that you guys said never going to last, the one that was going to break down this da 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 for years, how is the only thing real on the show, how are you trying to make that look bad? What is that? Somebody messaged me, it's because they don't want real relationships on TV. That was like, it's deeper than that. And then it turned into a conspiracy. It's like, well, I don't want to get like, black bald or shadow band but it was a really good observation they had the, about you know n- yeah that people don't want a good couple on tv and they had a lot more to say about that let's just well, look into that back one. back to what you're saying so when we started the fi- the hills everyone thought spencer was the executive producer everyone was kissing his butt saying you guys are the best couple we love you so much ashley and jason were like we love you guys we just want to be on your team well, you guys, everyone. Because I had called everyone to get them on. Right. I was the one meeting, going, flying to New York each week, every Monday for Sieski, meeting with the Spencer executives. Spencer vouched with who should be on it and what it was. It was like a whole thing. So anyways, after it aired and everyone saw that and then saw Spencer wasn't the executive like, producer Ooh. and were mad about their own images. Ashley had said that she felt upset about how she was betrayed and this and that and all these people. And they were like, you know what? Screw Spidey. So it's like, that's just not the way to go about I mean, it. It's like, we, we're we teammates. We're not these ego people like, we want to be the stars. Actually, that's the last. We should be the least entertaining on the show. We <laughs> want everyone to be successful, entertaining, because like we always say with Jersey Shore, we all need to be all stars. Everyone needs to win. Everyone needs success. And now it's done. It's and, dead. and now like I wouldn't film with these people again. You know? I mean, I'm, this isn't a conspiracy. Conspiracy. I just talked to Brody yesterday and he was like, all they did all season was just try to get me to talk bad about you and Heidi. And he's like, sometimes I slipped up and he's like, I did things I shouldn't even have said. But then I was like, I'm not, once I realized the gig, he was like, I'm not playing that. And in the beginning, he even said to me, like, it's your turn to get a little of this. Like last season, it was all me. So, yeah, you know, as that. much as he wants to say it was all producers, he chose that and admitted to me like it's your turn to take some of the heat like they made me look so bad last season like da 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 so you know he even has had to come to terms with like how awful he treated us and that's why I have forgiven him because he's apologized multiple times now even asking to do a joint birthday party in August which I'm like nah I'm cool I could probably do some low key no no we're gonna get the whole edition Rishi's gonna do it and it's like that energy he doesn't need a fake and no one's filming it so I appreciate this 180 turnaround out of him which you know is real and there is no cameras and he's reaching out and he's calling he's texting who's the opposite of adrena so and opposite of Eve, everybody else Nobody's. not jen i talk no, to jen, jen but jen i always said is yeah, jen stayed Jen's solid um Gen Z. but see the Jen's thing with adrena is now she's like playing victim again and playing stupid like your gig of playing stupid is up you are manipulative you're making things up you're lying you're starting fires you're the cause of all this drama and then you're like i don't know why heidi and i are off it's like first of all you made up lies about me to Kristen. You're saying bad things behind my back. You're gossiping about me. You're not being a good friend. What are you talking about? You're wondering why we're off. Like, I don't respect you or like you about that. And then she apologized to me later in the season. And I was like, great, we'll move on. But then ever since she's not been doing that, like Brody is to Spencer. And I'm like, we're just not where we thought I thought we were even after we ended the season. Cause I did think she was sorry. 
And even if she was saying like, the producers made me do that, this not, I said to her, you chose what you said. So I will hold you accountable for that. But if you are apologizing for all that, then we can move on. But I didn't know she was even at this level of filming and then I haven't heard from her either. Like if she cared, she should have said, hey, now it's aired. You've been seeing kind of what I've been saying. I, I am sorry. Hope everything's good. Like none of that is coming through. So I'm just definitely done playing pretend friends with Adrena. Oh, I, here we go. Jamie Fay. Seems like MTV is barely posting about the Hills. The comment I put, uh, I had to stop watching last night because it was so unfair. Everyone was on your side until you said, I don't even think everyone was on our side, but uh, I don't want to cause a relapse. Sorry that you won't tiptoe around adults. Who should, who should have to tiptoe around an adult just because they are recovering? Who should have to tiptoe around any adult? Like, you are only responsible for yourself. You are a freaking adult. OMG, these people are cray cray trying to blame you for their own confusion in life it's really really unfair and it makes me so mad you and Heidi are always right and yet they feature the adults who have gained zero wisdom in life yet so sad it's because even the producers themselves have no wisdom Thank you. Look at this energy, people. I love these people. I like this girl. Agree. Heidi is a happy wife. That's why she looks happy. The rest of the cast are miserable chefs and either single or about to be single or divorced. Jealous bitches. Okay. So that's the thing. I think that they were like, they pretend to be so happy and everything. It's like, because Spencer and I love each other. We do disagree and have arguments and talk it out, but we do it in a loving way kind way because we love each other like we've been together for 14 years and i think that's what everyone sees and the whole cast says that to us the whole time we want what you guys have it's like yeah well we work hard at it and we prioritize each other so that's not something to be jealous about that's something to like love and appreciate and motivate like i love love you want people to have good relationships and success and healthy families and that's something to root for not to be jealous and go against Karen Ann. And then we got to go oh, soon last, and talk I just, about our I just spin-off. love all this. Okay, people. this is our last one. Mind blown at how that entire group banded together on last night's episode and actually said that you and Heidi are the negative ones always talking shit. Can we have that highlight reel again of all of them being the nasty negative shit talkers that they are? Brody and Audrina started it all and keep fueling it and for some twisted as fuck reason aren't seen as the shitsters that they are. They talk out of both sides of their mouth, say something to stir up trouble, then sit in front of the camera and play dumb and innocent and caring. I yelled at the TV last night like a mad woman. So these, honestly, these DMs and tweets, I appreciate them so much. So I wanted to give them the time to read them because like, it makes me think, okay, I'm not in the twilight zone because I'm literally like, are to, to, yeah. like, is, are the people watching? Cause these are the weirdest, most insane people that like talk sh- say why is this person t-? like it's so to, strange so to i'm like and it was so hard it was one of the hardest things and i'm like i know i'm not crazy and they are all making me feel some type of way and this is so hard to navigate through it was so hard to film it was so hard on off camera and that's why thankfully airing people are seeing it more the way that we felt it too we're like what this is ridiculous this isn't even good tv at this point it's uncomfortable it's weird and it's not real or if you all feel that way come up at a different times have one-on-ones like you guys all just decide to band together because the producers are coaching you that way like i would say the producers no I'm 34 years old. You are not telling me that I'm going to go be mean to somebody. I'm not like, no, we're all past that. We're all veterans, most of us. Uh, and some people shouldn't be on this show. But at well, the same time, I'm well, excited for it. We got to well, take a no, better this, 10 minutes. But this, but this last minutes. drove me nuts okay, last 10 week. Minutes we're supposed Remember to when Adrina was like getting called out for like allegedly sleeping with Brody while Caitlin was in the other room, but they were just having deep talks and she was like, oh my gosh. Then Adrina said, this is uh, Jessica Rada Q is... Um, uh, Hi, Spencer. I had to message you as I'm watching last week Hill's episode and it's just so frustrating. When Adrina said, I was insensitive to Caitlin like Heidi's insensitive to me. Girl, what did Heidi do to you? You told her what Ashley said. We saw it. And Ashley even confirmed she said it to Heidi's face. Like, girl, you are not always a victim. Remember last season how everyone hated on Heidi for leaving the club early to be a mother? And that was a crime. But now this season, she lets loose a little and she's still in the wrong? My goodness, I need a new storyline. Heidi can't always be the scapegoat for drama. Dang. Off with Audrina and Ashley. I need a Team Spidey spinoff. 
It's true. And that's what we're shooting today. So good segue. We are going to shoot the Spidey spinoff right now. We are headed to the office. Bosses are coming in. I told the girls because I do love when they party and I want to be like a fun boss and let them drink. But sometimes I'm like, we got to tone down the drinking a little bit in the office. So I said four o'clock today. Let's when pop sales the are not popping. If sales are popping, like the good old days, you can pop as many bottles as you want. That's in. No. If we're filming a show. If we're filming a show. Yeah. But in real life, we were drinking, we're letting them drink during the day, and then things are, yeah. So the rule is, at the end of the day, on Friday now, pop the bottles, have fun. Even at lunch, you can start or whatever. But uh, I told them today, last night in a group text, I said, Spencer, please tell them all to not start drinking at 11 a.m. Because then by the end of the day, we're not getting good fin- footage. Everyone's taking shots and drinking, and it's just too much. So I can't have them be blacked out by 1 o'clock. They can be blacked out by 4 o'clock or 5 because I get good TV. I get that you want to drink and have fun. I want that. I want them to have that. But they also have a dinner that they're filming tonight. I need everybody to make it. I don't need anyone throwing up at the table, you know. So it's my like money. Last, I'm paying like for it. Like last week. Like last week, um, yeah. So also the great thing about our show is that it's going to break the fourth wall. So there's no more of this. It's like it's gonna feel real. It's gonna be more like a documentary. It's a docu series. That's even what, on Siesta Key. They're talking about line producers. Yeah, and we're going filming. past that though. We're yeah. putting. I mean, no, there's producers on speaker. You know, we're, yeah. yeah, there's other shows. So we will be that type of show right. where a real show where you're not you're not being manipulated as an audience because that's what's trying to happen. They're trying to make the audience think something right now with the Hills. That's just not true. Like this is, we are not the bad guys this season. We are literally being attacked by a bunch of jealous haters. And that's a fact. And I will see anyone in court, like uh, yeah. bring your evidence of anything on the contrary. Also, Brody literally will go on the record and be like, that's all they wanted was to make uh, Lauren, who quit last season, said all they wanted was to make 2006 Spidey out of the hills. They wanted to bring back hate Spidey. And she's like, I'm not doing that. I'm following the truth. And look, Lauren got replaced by Meg. So and we need, like, we're going to try to get that. Lauren actually on the podcast. That would be That's, great. So we'll see if she'll do it because Lauren can just hit all the facts and explain really the conspiracy that's going down here and who's behind it and what the season one ex- was like trying to not do what's going down now. So we're going to work on getting Lauren, the showrunner from last season, because maybe she'll air it out. We're going to do a real show, and it will be really fun and great, and we will definitely find a home for it because we have all stars that work for us. And the great part about being a reality star producer being a former reality star is you get both sides of the camera. So, like, I would never want to put my – um, employees or cast members in a position that they would feel uncomfortable or twist who they are. Like I'm all for do whatever is comfortable, do whatever you want, be extra if you want to be extra. If you don't want to be on it, don't. you don't have to be on it. So I want everyone to feel comfortable and good and they all have a lot of drama naturally. So they don't even have to try. I mean, like I was a very mature producer last week when they were filming and uh, one of uh, our team members called me and she's like, can I hit him? And I said, no, you can't hit him. I mean, no. And she's like, but it was it, he needs to be hit. I was like, she's no. like, I would in real life. I would. Like, I was just like, just don't. don't. But if I was a bad producer, I'd be like, I mean, yeah, I hit him. So, you know, I, I'm a good good yeah. producer. All right, we have to go. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for all your love and support. Pratt Daddy is sold in Erewhon Palisades. Next will be in Erewhon Venice. And then it'll be in Erewhon Silver Lake. So look out for those in your local Erewhons for all our Cali West Side people. And uh, yeah, Predator.com, Predator.com. And this is our last few of recapping the hills, and then we'll have other things and And guests guests, on, and we will pivot this whole thing. It's going to be. On oh, our last stand oh, here, I feel like we're oh, on our last Shout trial. out Heather McDonald. We're currently number seven on the iTunes charts. She had me on her podcast, Juicy Scoopers. So thanks to my mom, who, you know, is a huge uh, Patreon Juicy Scoop. Okay, all right, thanks, all right. guys. So yeah, number seven, heading to number one.